Okay, let's get started. It is 15 after the hour. Uh, my name is Kimberly Kaler. I'm president of AOE, and we're going to talk today about the seven ways to increase social media engagement. So a real quick dive. It's not a social media 101, but really an overview of some of the things that we have learned over the last couple of years in terms of driving engagement. So real quick about who AOE is. We are a fully owned subsidiary of ACI, and we um, are the for-profit consulting end of ACI. So we provide everything from marketing consulting to event planning, um, all sorts of other services related to back-end operations and association management. And we're proud to be the premier sponsor of the ACI convention. So diving into social media engagement, um, obviously, I'm guessing most of you probably have social media channels, and one of the biggest complaints that we hear is how do we actually get folks to engage? So the first one is really diving into video. This probably doesn't come as any surprise to you, but 85% um, of all internet users really would like to see more video, and they're using it um, on their devices. 54% of um, consumers want to see more video content as well from a brand standpoint. So anything that you can do with video will really help improve um, the engagement that you get in terms of interaction between those that you're targeting and, and feedback that they may give back you to you. One of the, the complaints we heard early on related to video is that it's so expensive to do and so difficult to, to shoot. Um, but gone are the days where you have to hire a professional video crew to do your video production. Um, doing something with your phone can be okay. Just make sure it's not shaky. But people love to see things when you're out on a job site, um, you know, just real quick interaction. Um, just a couple of tips, remember, obviously to review things, making sure everybody's got safety equipment on and proper you know, protocols are being followed. The last thing that you wanna do is actually share a video that's actually gonna create more controversy than it would good, if you will. So the next tip is actually to know when the best times to post are. And these times are shown in Eastern time zone because that's where the majority of our clients are, but they would actually apply to where the majority of your, um, where your target audience would be. So Facebook, it's in the afternoon or maybe the evening. That's when more people are looking at things. Um, Twitter, you can see more of the early morning. And this changes, and you can go to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, or even just Google this topic, and you can get the latest feedback and information. Um, when to post times have actually changed greatly since the beginning of the pandemic, because people are using their phones differently, they're interacting with their computer and their social channels a little differently as well, and at different times. So tip number three is actually one that we have been preaching since the beginning of social media. And it just relates to the third, third, third comment. And I'm gonna move the video here so we can see the slides a little bit better here. But the rule of thirds, we advocate for content, a third of it to be helpful. So tips, resources, et cetera. Um, Second, the, the second third should be promotional about the company, and then the third can be more fun and human interest. So if all you're ever doing is posting about the company, people aren't going to engage, they turn out a little bit. Um, an example of that number one may be something about the company, but it could be a resource, it could be a, um, you know, frequently asked questions or a document that you have on your website, or it could be something where you're pointing them to an industry resource. Maybe there's something on ACI's website that would be helpful to a client or industry. An article you read in ENR, um, you know, Concrete International, et cetera. So those are great examples of what that number one would be. And then the fun human interest one, if your team does something like Habitat for Humanity, um, you know, showing the lighter side of your employees, Make sure whatever you do, again, isn't controversial in any way, um, but showing the human element will really help drive engagement. Number four is tagging and engaging the community through the use of hashtags um, and then following other influencers. So hashtags can be overdone. That may be a question I get at the end, but it's recommended to have about three hashtags per post. 
um, using hashtags. And if you go to these three resources or the two resources I have listed here, hashtagify.me and tweetdeck.twitter.com, it'll give you an idea of how different hashtags are trending. And this slide here actually helps, um, you know, give you an, an idea as well. So if you go to this resource, you can type in a word and it'll show you what is tracking. Um, it'll also just show you what's tracking on any given day. So for example, if you, if you went in during, um, you know, right now with uh, the NCAA basketball tournament, go in there and in, my guess is that will probably be trending in terms of showing with different hashtags also helps you create a hashtag and then see as you start to gain traction. So those are free tools available. Um, all you have to do is log in and that'll give you some guidance on how to, how to use them effectively. And then our next tip is also related to using free tools that are out there in terms of identifying trends. So trends.google.com um, and then also social media platforms will not only allow you to load content, but it'll see how things are engaging. So for example, we use Sprout Social quite a bit. It is a paid service, but it allows us to load content, um, you know, a week or however far in advance we want. We can say, hey, we'd really like to see this uh, post go out at this time of the day. And we then are able to go back in and see how something worked. So we can evaluate, for example, if we're doing a social media campaign for a concrete contractor and we can look and say hey this type of content really gained a lot of traction we also experiment with times a day of, hey it looks like we got a lot more traction and engagement when we posted something at um, you know, during the lunch hour as compared to the middle of the afternoon. So these tools are available to help you figure out what it works well for you and finding trends and platforms. And honestly, there's so much information in them. Um, you know, it could be a little overwhelming at first. So you may want to take a step back and say, what do we want to actually mine in terms of data? Now, Hootsuite is cheaper than Sprout Social. It used to be free. I believe now the accounts are about $10 a month. It also has capabilities to show you the reporting and the trending, and you can preload content. Doesn't have quite the reporting level that Sprout Social does, but that's a nice option that's a little bit more cost effective. And it's a great place to start, again, because the data can be so overwhelming in the beginning. Um, it may be a great place to start, and you may advance at some point to Sprout Social. And this is an example of what Google Trends would look like. I just went and typed in um, the word concrete, shows you where people are talking about concrete on the internet, you know, some of the topics that are coming up, um, you know, fire pit, bird bath, big city crush concrete, related queries, et cetera. So it's a fun thing to do to just play in there and see what is trending related to social media. And then tip number six, um, when we talk about engagement, one of the things that's really key is looking at the right kind of engagement. So this is um, in the public domain. This is Seco Concrete Construction, longtime ACI member, and they are actually a, one of our clients. We help them with their social efforts. And this is their Facebook page. And under their rules of engagement, under the about section, they have a social media policy. And I've only just copied bits and pieces of it here. It's actually pretty lengthy. But by posting how they want people to engage with their site, it gives them the ability to go in and delete. Um, so for example, you can see here it notes, you know, your, your comment should not contain any profanity. There should not be sexually explicit, no trolling, no solicitations, um, you know, anything that um, defamatory, anything that is discriminatory in any nature. Seco has the right to delete those messages. So that's good because it can, you know, if you have a message that is shown on your, on your social media channels and the question is, do we leave it? Do we not? Especially if it's negative. These are the rules of engagement and they've shared with their audience that if you are not following these rules, we will actually go ahead and remove the content. So great example, again, um, you know, props to Seco, maybe look up their page, follow them, and then this would be a really great um, model for you. And then the last one here is looking at what's working in terms of metrics. And this comes back to really making sure that you have a goal as well. It's something I've talked a lot about in our demos this week 
too often when people start social media campaigns, you know, five, six, seven years ago, I'd get the question of, uh, you know, we want to start social media. And I'd say, why? And, and the answer would be because our competitors are on it. And that may be a reason that you do need to do it, yes. But what are you trying to accomplish? Is it really to um, engage with your employees? Is it to um, gain work, um, branding efforts in terms of your local communities that you serve? So, uh, maybe it's to, to highlight your projects. Could be all of the above. But how do you know if you're being successful unless you've actually outlined what you are hoping to accomplish? Um, so looking at that at least monthly, giving you a couple of ideas here in terms of metrics that you could pull out, different resources. Again, you could just be overwhelmed with the data that's actually available. Um, you know, Google Analytics is a great way to look at things from your website as well and see how that traction is going. But um, take a step back and figure out what you want to measure um, to, to then go from there. So with that, those are all social channels. Um, I'll invite you to follow us on them. And then I'm going to go ahead and ask either Carol or Kim to come on the line here to see if there's any questions happy to answer related to social media. So you're welcome to put questions in the chat box or feel free also if you'd like to unmute yourself, take yourself off of um, you know, if you want to actually show your face, that's great too, or just, you know, send a question out would work fine. So far, Kimberly, no questions in the chat box. Oh, no, here we go. From okay. Karen, from Karen O'Brien, if you had to choose one platform to start with, which would you choose? Great, great question. For social media. For social media. So I, I would suggest without knowing, you know, anything about your organization, I would say LinkedIn. Um, and a lot of people forget LinkedIn. It's, it's that online Rolodex that we've all been on for 20 years, it seems like now. It's probably about that. Um, and we don't, for the most part, don't use it very effectively. And then the second place would probably be Facebook. Now that answer has changed two, three years ago. Um, Facebook was not what I recommended. Facebook at that time was very much personal and there was no separation between the business world um, on Facebook and personal. And, that, and Facebook, in order to compete, did so much in terms of their offerings with company pages, organizations, groups, et cetera. So Facebook and LinkedIn would be where I put your efforts. Um, Twitter it still has a great following, especially if under the age of about 35. Um, it's where a lot of people actually get their news. I'm not personally a huge Twitter fan, but you know we still try and, and share content on Twitter as well. But I would focus your efforts in the beginning on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, there is some growing interest also in Instagram. But if, you, if you're doing Instagram, you got to make sure you've got photos for everything. Um, you know, so you, you could play with maybe posting to Instagram once or twice a week, you know, very visually appealing things, um, where Facebook maybe two to three times a week for an organization. Great question. Thank you. I will add one more thing to that. Um, oftentimes, I'll get questions about, hey, there's this new channel, or my kid's using this, or whatever, and wouldn't it be neat if we were on that? Well, the thing I'll remind you is you're not probably going to have a lot of engagement. If it's new, um, if it's just being used by the, the under 18 generation or under college age generation, um, your chances are your target audiences aren't playing in that space. So again, ask yourself, who are you trying to engage with? And make sure you know the answer to that before you dive into um, what platforms you're going to use. And we have another question, Kimberly, from Dolce. Um, what are your thoughts on a social media manager? Um, social media manager for an organization is actually a really wise idea just to make sure that everything has the same voice within an organization. And that doesn't mean that that person creates all the content, but it is really good. And how we typically handle social media for organizations is you want everything to go through one funnel. You wanna look at things from a branding standpoint, um, the key messages that come through just to have that, that second set of eyes. I'd be very careful about having a you know, corporate account for an engineering firm, you know, as an example, 
and all employees knowing what the the username and password is to post on that behalf. You just want to be able to control it. Things that may seem innocent enough, um, you know, can, can actually really backfire. And we've we've helped out a lot of organizations over the last couple of years with um, things that went out accidentally. Um, you know, former employees that maybe have posted some negative things on a page. Again, that's where that SECO policy is a really great example. If you don't have that, please do it. Um, so having a manager is really, really key. Great question, Dolce. Thank you. Any other questions coming in? No more questions in the chat box. Okay, fantastic. Well, I will invite all of you um, to contact me if you have any other questions and if we can help you in any way. We'll be following up with all attendees with copies of the presentations we've made, these demos um, throughout convention. Um, all of our contact information will, will be in there. Um, and in the meantime, if we can help in any way, uh, visit our website, aoeteam.com, and you can reach me there. Thank you all for joining today. Enjoy the, the last full day of convention. <laughs>